Hey everyone, we are here with Lauren, who Hi. is the operations manager today, and Sarah, who has treats for three very special cougars. And the first one up on the list here is Riza Cougar. Oh yeah, we like that. Your face is on the wrong side. I gotta come around here. Oh, I'm not going to take it. A lot of our cats are elderly, and so what the keepers do is they freeze the blood from the meat that we feed every day, and they turn it into blood sickles for the cats. And I heard you say somebody had a, a favorite tuna? Yeah, Maya. Um, Maya, a couple times, she's been given sickles, and she just lays on them. She does not to eat them. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear her all the way over there, but what she was saying is most of them are made from uh, the blood off of beef, I guess, mm -hmm. beef. but they found that Maya just uses hers to cool off with and lays on it, so they made her one with tuna, and she really likes it, so Maya's going to get a tuna one, but this one is uh, red meat. And I apologize, I can see your names as you're signing on, but I cannot see what you're saying. So if you have any questions, I think Luana is on here and she can answer your questions for you. I wish I could see them because then I would answer them out loud, but I cannot. Risa came here, her name means journey in German, and she came from a long roundabout way of getting here. She had been sold as a cub to a drug dealer in New York and apparently was declawed very badly. And then she ended up being rescued and sent to a sanctuary in South Florida. But when that person died that was running the sanctuary, there weren't any provisions made for what would happen to the animals. So uh, we brought Riza and Jojo, a hybrid cat here from that facility. Because of the fact that she was declawed very young and uh, very badly, our, our vets have to trim her claws because they grow in at really peculiar angles. <laughs> She's really loving that. So you got Maya over there? I'm going to come over. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Dignified tone. Somebody's having a bath. <laughs> I hear you like tuna. Can you get some tuna? Oh, oh I lose that. Can you go get it? Did you miss that one? You didn't see where it went? Oh, you drop. just need it hand delivered. <laughs> Maya was a pet, and her owner, when she got older, um, was afraid that her health was not going to allow her to keep Maya. And so she ended up coming here to spend the rest of her life here. We are the end of the line for these cats. Once they come to us, they are here for the rest of their lives. They never have to worry about being relocated again, unless it's a rehab bobcat. So if it's a bobcat or any cat who comes from the wild, then there's the possibility of being able to rehab them and send them back to the wild where they belong. But if they were born in cages, unfortunately, they're stuck in cages for the rest of their lives. Oh, that is just so good. Aren't you glad you came out for this? We have a whole group of volunteers who come out every Wednesday night and they make enrichment for the cats, including these sickles. Let's see if I can get a different angle because all I can see is tongue. <laughs> And then they fill up the freezers so that all week long the cats have nice frosty treats to help them cool off. Depending on where you live, it might be quite cold, but here in Florida it's like 74 degrees today, so it's warm enough to warrant a sickle. 
in the background, you can see Sarah trying to tempt Mac out for his sickle. I don't know how he's going to feel about being seen when we try to go over there. You can go ahead and throw it to him. I don't know that he's going to come over if I'm right there. You'll notice that Mac is very old and arthritic. I should have looked at their bio pages before I started the feed, but these guys are all in their uh, late teens and early 20s. All of the stories of our cats are available online at bigcatrescue.org slash cat bio, C-A-T-B-I-O. You can find all of our cats there and you can either go to their page and see photos and videos of them or you can just play the audio of their story right there on that page. I'm not going to go too close because I don't want him to run away, but I'm going to zoom in and see how close I can get before upsetting him. Mac Cougar was a pet. And when his owner's zoning changed, he asked if we would take care of the cat for a while and then, of course, never came back for him. Can you guys hear that crunch on that ice? <laughs> oh, Matt is watching. Matt Resick is probably Mac's favorite person in the world and is the only person here, I think, who Mac would allow to give him a bath because he can't groom himself anymore. Mac comes out and bathes him with a hose and a brush. We don't touch the cats here because that would really send the wrong message. They're not pets and they don't belong in cages. But sometimes they need a little help from their friends and Mac sure certainly gets that. She's still over there working on hers. Yep. We also have a spare if you wanted to try Manny. I'm worried about Manny fighting the wire. <laughs> He scares me to death when we, when he sees anything about food. I haven't seen how he is about sickles. You did a good job of getting all these cats right here in the same area, so I don't have to go very far in between them. There are some great films coming out about cougars in the wild. I just came back from World Wildlife Day in New York City and there was a film festival there because the, the uh, topic this year was Big Cats Under Threat. And so I got the privilege of being able to preview some of those videos that will be coming out. There's two of them in particular that I found really fascinating that have to do with Cougars. These guys are all cougars. They have a lot of different names. Down in South America, they're called pumas. Out west, they call them mountain lions. Um, some people call them catamounts or mountain screamers or painter cats. But at any rate, we've always thought that the big cats were solitary except for lions. And what they're finding is in some areas, protected areas in um, I'm forgetting where, somewhere in South America, <laughs> they have a protected area where cougars are doing really, really well there. And what they're finding is those cougars are living in huge prides just like lions do. And they're helping each other with kills and raising each other's young. And so it's just really bizarre to see that when that's never been documented before with mountain lions. So it, it kind of shows that when there's enough habitat and enough space for them to behave as they would prefer, that they tend to be much more social than what we had ever realized that they were. She is loving that. Goodness, did you still working on yours too? <laughs> what did you do with yours? I made a sickle mess. <laughs> Good boy. Crunched it all the little pieces.
You might have noticed that Lauren is in a blue shirt and Sarah is in a green shirt. Somebody want to tell people what that's all about? Say it loudly so they can hear. So we have different uh, color shirts for every level of volunteers. So as a green shirt, I have to make 32 hours a month. And I've had to have been here for a certain amount of time. So March 14th is actually going to be my two year anniversary. Oh. I came as an intern. And Lauren has to keep up more hours. How many? Uh, Navy is 40 hours. Yeah. Um, and with that, we with each level we get different responsibilities. So you work your way up all the way to the big cats as a green shirt. Yellow shirt is fewer hours and cougars and small cats. And red shirt is small cats and even fewer hours. And maybe everything. <laughs> what kind of training do you need to be able to hand out sickles? Uh, you have to. I'm not entirely sure how it works specifically for volunteers because I went up through as an intern. So I think you um, to be able to hand out enrichment to the cougars, you have to be a yellow shirt that signed up for the cleaning. Um, so once you clean them, you can then train to give them enrichment. Um, and then for the big cats, it's a green shirt. So you have to the same way you have to be able to enrichment sign up. Um, it's different to offering. So offering, you have to be a green shirt before you can do cougar offering. Um, but for enrichment, it's yellow. And when you say uh, signed off, they have to like watch it several times? Yeah, and... so they have to watch a certified trainer hand out enrichment a few times, and then they have to be observed handing out the enrichment a few times. Um, and then the final sign off is either by an enrichment committee member or a staff member. Because we got to know how to throw those sickles at you. <laughs> yeah, it takes a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. And you still mess. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm sorry I couldn't see your... your comments. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us. And I hope Luana was able to answer all of your questions. If not, I'm sure she'll stay in the chat room for a while and finish up. And thank you to you ladies. You're welcome. Bye-bye.